It came down to the final day of the season, October 3rd, but the Cardinals finally got the answer. The Atlanta Braves pulled out the National League West title by one half game on that Sunday, and the Cardinals knew their opponent. The first game was scheduled to begin on Wednesday, October 6th, but rain halted the game with Phil Necker on the Braves leading Joaquin Andujar and the Cardinals one to nothing in the bottom of the fifth. So the next night, they tried game one again. This time it was Bob Porsche on the mound. The dean of the Cardinals staff was making his first ever start in postseason play. Porsche pitched perhaps the finest game of his career that night. He walked none, struck out six, gave up three hits, and shut out the high-powered Braves seven to nothing. But what Cardinal fans will remember most of this game was Willie McGee and the inside the park home run that almost was. Next pitch from Perez. Swing and a ground ball, fair, pass first, down into the left field corner. He'll get two, he may get three. Right fielder gets, can I get the ball? He may circle the bases. They bring him around, they stop for no reason at all at third base, and he's there with nobody out. For no reason at all, he stopped at third base, and the right fielder, Claudel Washington, didn't even have the ball out in the right field corner. McGee was redeemed moments later when he scored on a sacrifice fly by Ozzie Smith. Here's the pitch. Swing and a fly ball to deep center field. That will score the run. Murphy makes the catch. Here comes McGee. The throw. Too late. St. Louis leads one to nothing. That was all the scoring that was needed, but the Cardinals didn't stop. They put on an awesome display in the sixth inning by sending 11 men to the plate and putting things out of reach for the Braves. St. Louis set a National League Championship Series record that inning with six singles. Those hits, combined with a walk, a sacrifice fly, and a hit batsman, led to five Cardinal runs. A rain out of Game 2 on Friday night allowed Phil Necro another day of rest, enabling him to take the mound on Saturday night with his baffling knuckleball. The Cardinals took an early lead when Ken Overtfell scored from third on a wild pitch in the first inning. The Braves took a 2-1 to one lead in the third, when a three-base error, with a man on base, allowed batter Rafael Ramirez to round the bases on what should have been a single. The Braves picked up another run in the fifth, but they would get only two more hits in the game. Sixth inning, after singling to right, Keith Hernandez scored on a Darrell Porter double to move the Cardinals within one run. Two innings later, with Gene Garber pitching, the Cardinals scratched out a run in typical whitey ball style. Not much power, but very effective. First up, Darrell Porter. Hernandez is grounded out here in the eighth. The three-two pitch is coming to Porter. Ball four. And the tying run is on. The pitch was inside. The batter is George Hendrick, the leading home run hitter for St. Louis this year. That was the fifth walk given to the Cardinals to go with their six hits. And a battle now between Garber and Hendrick. Well, what will it be? A double play or a home run or something in between? The Braves can get the double play if they can get the ground ball. Royster guards the third base foul line to guard against the extra base hit. And they play Hendrick to pull just a little. Outfielders are really spread out. Porter is not fast. The pitch swing and a ball up the middle is a hit. Porter makes the turn. He's going to go to third. The throws into second. First and third one out. The tying runs at third, the lead run at first. And who's up? The fellow who committed the error earlier that allowed Atlanta get the extra run. He has struck out three times, Willie McGee. After three pitches, McGee was facing a two-strike count and in danger of striking out for the fourth time in the game. McGee is just a rookie. He's an excitable sort, and he's got to be beside himself at the moment, wondering what in the world this veteran relief pitcher is going to serve up there. Garber's not going to groove it for him. He'll try to get McGee to chase a bad ball. The 1-2 pitch is on the way. And a bouncing ball over the pitcher's head. Shortstop gets it, tags a man, but the tying run scores. 3-3, three, three, McGee is on. You should have seen him hit that ball. He did everything but strike out as he drove home the tying run. 3-3 three, three here in the bottom of the eighth. The inning ended and Bruce Suter came in to face Atlanta. Result, three up, three down. Now it was up to David Green, Tommy Hearn, and Ken Obergfell to send the fans home happy. 
After singling to left, Green was sacrificed to second, setting the stage for Obi, who had gone six out of ten against Garber in 1982. Strike one to Oberfeld. A hit would win it for St. Louis and put them up two games to none. Garber trying to send it into extra innings. Winning run at second, one out. He spins but does not throw back to second base. And some of the uninitiated yell balk. A single by Green, a sacrifice by her, and the pitch to Obergefell. Swing and a shot to right center field. Butler's on the move. He cannot get it, and the winning run scores. The Cardinals have won the game, four to three, and they lead two games to none. Butler, the center fielder, came within an eyelash, within an eyelash of making a game-saving catch. He didn't get it. The Cardinals won it, and they're in the spot to sweep. And I repeat, how they could have pitched to Obergefell is beyond me, but that's not my concern. Both teams traveled to Atlanta that night for Sunday's game. The Braves had fought off adversity all season, and they were determined to do it again. But the Cardinals came out flying high in game three, wanting to end things quickly and get back to St. Louis. Second inning, Keith Hernandez had singled and Darrell Porter walked when George Hendrick let his bat do some talking. The pitch to Hendrick. Swing, a line drive, base hit into right. Hernandez will score. Porter goes on to third without a play. St. Louis leads one to nothing here in the second. Next up, wondrous Willie McGee. Ball won the count. The pitch coming. McGee swings and a shot to right center. That ball is a base hit, and that ball goes to the wall. It's already two to nothing. Here comes Hendrick to score. The throw to the plate. They may get him. He is safe, and it's three to nothing. And McGee ends up at third base. It was Ozzie Smith's turn to make a contribution. Here's a base hit up the middle by Ozzie Smith. Willie McGee is home to make it four to nothing. And the fans are all riled up here in Atlanta. A four-run rally and still nobody out. And that's going to be all for Rick Camp as Joe Torrey comes out of the dugout. The Cardinals and the Braves each added two more runs before Suter was called on to put the victory on ice. Suter laboring to get that final out. His pitch, a swing, and a fly ball to deep center. Willie McGee is under it, and so is Lonnie Smith. It's caught by Lonnie Smith, and that's a pennant winner for the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals win 6-2 and eliminate the Atlanta Braves in three games in a row. So St. Louis, the team that did not have enough power to win, swept three games from the team which led the National League in home runs. And it was the Cards who headed on to their 13th World Series to meet the Milwaukee Brewers. Once more, it was power versus speed. The Cardinals' 67 home runs looked mighty weak when compared to Harvey's Wallbangers' major league leading 216 round trippers. But then again, the Cardinals left the Brewers flat footed when it came to stealing bases, having been successful on 200 thefts to Milwaukee's 84. The sellout crowd of 53,000 at Bush Stadium was buzzing with excitement on Tuesday, October 12th, after August A. Bush Jr. had circled the field on Hydesdale. As things turned out, that was the best performance St. Louis fans saw all evening from their hometown favorites. It was one of those nights when nothing went right. The Cardinals were blanked 10 to nothing by Mike Caldwell, and the Brewers had won the first game. But there were some bright spots for St. Louis. Darrell Porter, the MVP in the playoffs, continued his torrid hitting with a double and a single to account for two of the team's three hits that night and leave it to Whitey Herzog to put the evening in perspective. He summarized it best when he said, I'm glad we didn't have to play a doubleheader. Game two started out much like the first game, with the Brewers taking an early 3-0 lead. Cardinal fans were both nervous and quiet. That is, until Tommy Herr generated some excitement with two out in the third. Willie McGee was at third when Herr took charge. 